Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I thought I would try and see how fast I can beat Pokemon Emerald with my favorite starter, Skeptile. As a kid I would always choose Trico or Mudkip, and as I've gotten older, the Trico line truly has become one of my favorite of the groups, uh, followed by Blaziken actually, which is kind of weird since I rarely used Torchic growing up. Um, but I would always pick Trico. Trico is like my favorite little green starter. I never choose grass starters either, even as all the lines like Gen 1, obviously I was Squirtle, or Charmander, Gen 2, it was Cyndaquil, then all of a sudden Trico came along, Gen 4, we're thinking fire still, it, yeah, I just, I don't know. But anyways, let's, let's talk about Skeptile a little bit. Skeptile has some pretty good stats in my opinion. It's kind of squishy just like Breloom was with its HP. It's only got about 70 there. Um, it's got pretty good attack though for physical moves. We aren't going to see too much of the physical side. Thankfully due to the Gen uh, 3 mechanics. Um, its defense is 65. Again, it's kind of squishier side of things which isn't going to be great. But I think we'll be able to manage. Now its special attack is 105. That is amazing. It's well, not amazing, but it's really good. Uh, <laughs> especially for the fact that it, it, all its grass moves, which is stab, are going to be special attack. Special defense is 85, and then it's got a whopping speed of 120. So we should pretty well outspeed everything that we see, which is going to be great. Its moveset, it doesn't learn much due to being the third stage. I am doing it from the third stage starter, not growing it as it could be. We could see a lot of better moves if we started as a Trico. Uh, such as like Mega Drain and stuff like that and not being stuck to just absorb. But the main move is going to be what we learn at level 29, Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade is a critical hitting machine. Uh, it's going to be very helpful for us by all means. And I can't wait to get this started. As like before with the Breloom Challenge, I am writing this part before I finish the challenge let me know in the comments what you guys think are we able to beat skeptile and how long do you think it's going to take me but let's get into it now the early game is going to be relatively easy for us i think but i do clear out most of the trainers to get there some extra xp before hitting the roxanne i do grab the tm for bullet seed and then i grab the hm for cut and then we make our way to our first gym so we go in the roxanne at level 14 and like i thought this was going to be really easy this was an absolute cakewalk for Skeptile. Both Geodudes going down thanks to the combination of our super effective stab absorb. And Nose Pass was a similar fate, but just a little bit longer. Roxanne using potions and having the Orenberry makes us have to use Absorb quite a bit to get it down as she just kept healing it. But in the end, nothing was ever out of reach. We take down Roxanne at about 9 minutes and 37 seconds. This is a great pace in my opinion, we'll keep it rolling here. I then go save Briny and get the good boy Pico back for him, that way we can make our way to Doofer. But before we do that, I head my way back to Petalburg Forest, grab the Miracle Seed so we can have a little bit of boost to our Grass type. And then as soon as I get the Doofer, I grab the Silk Scarf because I think that's going to be super helpful just in case we want to use Return. I then clear out all the trainers in the gym again. Just to have those extra levels, we got a couple challenges on our way that will be happening, such as Flannery and Winona. But without do, let's get into the Brawly fight. We go into the Brawly fight at level 19. I've given Sceptile the Miracle Seed to help boost their grass moves. I've also taught him Bullet Seed. And the first fight goes really easy with first the Machop. We get two three packs of Bullet Seed, putting it down real quick. The meta type fight, always an absolute joke. The best thing you can do here is try and get the Super Potion out of it. We don't, unfortunately, because we got a three pack versus it. We get the Makahita though. All it does is bulk up after we do Bullet Seed, but two Bullet Seeds is all it takes because we get the perfect amount. We then go to Slateport straight away. We deal with Team Aqua, which is relatively easy. And now it's on to the May fight. I've touched Skeptile Rock Tomb as this is probably our best answer to the Combuskin. I've also taught it Swagger just in case, as that is a strat I like to use sometimes versus the Combuskin. But Right away, Rock Tomb takes the Wingle down, perfect. We go again here, takes about a quarter of Combuskin. We take an Ember. Another one puts it about a third, I guess, is where we're looking at. I decided to Bullet Seed, which was super risky. We do get the three pack, though, get it down. We have 17 HP left, but Lombre 
is quite a joke and all it takes is two bullet seeds. After beating May, we proceed to get the Rock Smash HM. This is going to be something obviously we need later on. And then we head out to beat Wally to a pulp. Um, I'm not even going to talk about this. I'm not even sure why I showed this fight to be completely honest, but whatever. Let's talk about the game plan for Watson. And the game plan for Watson is strictly this. Get the level 29. Level 29, we learn Leaf Blade, the critical hit attacking move base 70 power stab move as well it's going to be crucial for us and without that i honestly don't see us beating him so this is why we take on all the trainers in here i had to take on a couple trainers outside too but that was okay and here it is leaf blade one shots voltorb and electrite easy peasy it takes magneton down to a third we do get paralyzed unfortunately and our cherry berry got pulped uh during the electric fight and the magneton actually takes us down to 14 hp oh no Thankfully, the main actress uses Howl though, and we are able to Leaf Blade and one shot it thanks to our ability Overgrow. We then do the Team Magma stuff at Mount Chimney, but that was a pretty easy fight, so I'll grab Meteorite and head right to Flannery. Okay, this is going to be a tough one, but our strategy stays the same Leaf Blade, Leaf Blade, Leaf Blade, Leaf Blade. We go in at level 36, take down the Nummel, take down the camera up, even though it tried to attract us. Skeptile's too good for that though. We get a Rock Tomb off on the Slugma. Perfect. And I try the Swagger Strat on Torkoal. It hits a Self Confusion. Perfect. We take it to half. It breaks Confusion. Body slams us. And then the Overheat. Okay. I tried this fight a couple more times and we got nowhere. I come back at level 37. We get a couple Leaf Blades in again. The fight goes exactly the way it was going at level 36. Except for we got the Hyper Potion on the camera up. Perfect. Okay. We're level 38 now, going into the Slugma. We're going to Rock Tomb just like before. Easy. We know that's going to do it. Torkoal time. I try the Swagger Strat one more time. I think this is the key. We survive an Overheat on 3 HP. We've got Leaf Blade combined with Overgrow. Is this enough? It takes it to half, but it hits itself in confusion. We do it. We take down Flannery. Perfect. Flannery is behind us. I go straight to Norman because... You want an easy challenge after you have a hard challenge. I don't see any reason for leveling up here. We get right into it, and it's Leaf Blade again. We Leaf Blade the Spinda. It's a one-shot. Vigoroth comes out next. What do we do? We Leaf Blade. It goes down. Lanoon comes out, and it's the same fate. Just kidding. It survives on a little bit of HP, but just Hyper Potions, so two more. Three more, actually, because we got two Hyper Potions there, and it's down. I did teach Septile Dig. Obviously because of the true want ability that Slack King has. Making this fight very trivial as we get it to just the point where we can Leaf Blade it safely without having to take any damage. And with that, we beat Norman at level 39 in a time of about an hour. So, hey, we're doing pretty well in my opinion, but the biggest challenge is coming ahead. That being of Winona. This is going to be probably our hardest gym battle elite four battle of the whole game i'm super terrified of this but we'll get to that when we get to that first we get the hm from wally's father for surf that being said we can now go get a few household items in Petalburg city here we get a few repels for we don't have to see those pesky wild animals and then i grab the rare candy that's behind the back of the water there and then i'm on my way to winona but first we have to challenge the weather institution i'm not going to show much of that because that was relatively easy we are super over level for that at this point and then we have the may fight again super over leveled at this point level 43 only level 28 pokemons we just we just took everything down rather easy the combuskin was the only thing that kind of gave us a little bit of issues there but we make our way to winona's gym here we are at level 53 just kidding we lost all the footage to the first few fights of this we tried to i believe level 45 and then made our way up to level 53 here um again rock tomb is our key leaf blade for a little bit of other things i have taught giga drain here just to try and get our health back if we need it but as you can see rock tomb doesn't one shot the tropius it takes a couple things here comes my arch enemy though i swear to god i hate this bird it took forever to put this thing down, but we get to the point where it hyper potions. I'm at level 
We're at HP 64, my apologies. I giga drain to get back because we're in an overgrow. I keep giga draining because I think this is it. But sand attack misses. We get the level. Oh my god, I said it again. Level 29. HP 29. We rock tomb it all the way down to there and we get aerial east. I was so close. But back to it. Start of the fight is going to go the exact same way all the time. The only difference is are these Skarmory fights because it depends on if it sand attacks us or if it just straight up goes for aerial ace. Sand attacks not ideal. We're going to miss our moves. Um, we're at 72 HP here though as we got it down finally. We missed our Rock Tomb versus Altaria. It dragon dances. We miss it again. 21 HP. We finally hit it. It puts us down. Okay, one last fight here. We're at level 55 this time. Fight goes the exact same way at the start. Everything's going down really quick. We rock tomb the Tropius to the red. We actually get a hyper potion here, which is perfect. I love seeing hyper potions on the early Pokemon because then we don't have to worry about the hard ones. My Arch Emony, the Skarmory, comes back out. We Leaf Plague, do a little under a third, I think. Maybe a bit of a third because here we go. We get it. It did sand attacks. So we, we are missing up a storm but we finally get it down 65 hp can we not miss our rock tombs we miss our first one and then we get a dragon dance but we hit our second one it dragon dances again can we hit this we do we take down winona at about a minute 40 i've perfect we go and fight the may fight this is just trivial because again we are over leveled for her um but we rock tomb the tropius take it down quickly we leaf blade the pelipper after it protects because pelippers just love to protect in this game combuskin still kind of a little bit difficult but it is a two shot now with rock tomb easy and then the ludicolo is just a leaf blade away from calling it a night perfect a little bit of extra xp we make our way to the magma high moon now there isn't much to the show in this so let's just get right to the maxi fight he starts it off with Mighty Anna. We obviously Leaf Blade it because it's a Timidator attack. We're one attack top now. We get a Rock Tomb off. We hit it. Perfect. It heals here, which I honestly didn't think it would at half health. We Leaf Blade quickly just to make sure we hit. We Rock Tomb it. Put it to the red. It Air Cutters. We're at 62 HP. Another Super Potion. We snap out of Confusion. Thankfully, though, get the Rock Tomb off. And a Leaf Blade finishes the Crobat. Camera out comes out. Leaf Blade. As you can tell, there's a bit of a trend in this video today, and the name of the game is a Leaf Blade. We hit the Slate Port, and we activate the Team Aqua kind of stuff that happens in Lily Cove, but nothing nothing about that was too hard. So let's just talk about the Tate and Liza fight. Like I said in our last video, this fight is typically one of the hardest fights when it comes to a solo run. You're 2v1. Um... And that's just it. You're taking two attacks, but you're only given one attack. But this case is very, very different for us. We have super effective moves on three of their four Pokemon. And with that, why don't we jump right into it? Tate and Liza start off with a Zatu and Claydol. I've got my Meryl here just to be there. We rock tomb the Zatu, and it goes down. We are level 59, way over leveled at this point, which is kind of unfortunate, but this is what it needed to be, to be where we're at and at the time we're at. Like we are two hours into this and I think we're doing great. Claydol just earthquakes, perfect. I go for Leaf Blade on the Soul Rock because Flamethrower absolutely terrifies me. We one shot it, we get earthquaked again. I decide to Giga Drain the Lunatone this time, which also one shots, good to know. To get her health back, he earthquakes again, just chip. And we just leaf blade it down and there goes Tate and Liza. After the Tate and Liza fight, we get another quick double battle. But thankfully we actually get a partner this time. We only bring the Sceptile, nothing else. It's a solo run guys, come on, use your heads. Anyways, we get into it. We get Matang as a partner, which is perfect because it's going to do a crucial thing in this fight that makes this fight way easier than it already was we leaf blade the mighty anna on the one side taking it out because i'm going to target the one side to try and make this a 2v1 for us we then <laughs> leaf played the camera up down to the red on the right side matang is taking out the one on the left we take out the one on the right crowbat comes in 
and Matang psychics it, putting it to half health, making it so we can just take it down, not taking any damage from it. Perfect. 2v1. That's all she wrote for Archie and the admin Tabitha. Golbat comes out. We got psychic. We leaf blade it. Mighty Anna's left. See you later. We then go get the HM for dive. That way we can finish off the Team Aqua and Team Magma storyline. And we go right into the battle with Archie. There's nothing too much here. I thought this was going to be rather easy. We Leaf Blade the Mighty Anna. It's a one shot. Perfect. We Rock Tomb. It's about half damage there for the Crobat. It did confuse us, which is unfortunate. Because we hit ourselves once. Twice. Three times while taking two wing attacks. And... Yeah, that didn't go as exactly as I planned. Okay, we go back into it after one other try because we also got Confuse Raid. Um, anyways, the fight goes the exact same way at the start. We don't get Confuse Raid though. Perfect. We know it's going to Super Potion, so we Leaf Blade. I Rock Tomb it. It goes down to just a sliver. It Confuse Raid us. Oh, no. We get a critical hit Leaf Blade though, even though I meant to hit Rock Tomb. Can we take out the Sharpedo? We do because we snap out of confusion. And that's how I thought the first fight would go. We end up in the city I can't pronounce. Oh my goodness. Anyways, Wallace sends us off on a journey to get Rayquaza. Now tell me why the Hoenn League champion couldn't do that. Or Steven. You sent a 10 year old. This game. I tell ya. Anyways, we get to see the cinematic masterpiece. And then we jump right into the fight with Juan. I've talked Screptile Brick Break, but that wasn't even needed in this fight. This fight was a joke. We Leaf Blade, we Leaf Blade. Kingdra is the only thing that took one Leaf Blade. It just hyper potioned after double teaming, and then we took out everything. Why did Juan become a gym leader? Oh my goodness. Anyways, we make our way to Victory Road. Wally bombards us with a fight here, but we take it on like a champ. Skeptile takes two rock tombs to take down the Alteria. It then takes two brick breaks for the Roselia. It does no damage to us, chipping away at like 11 HP there, I think. Delcati is next, and brick break makes this fight trivial for the next two. Magneton is also down to a brick break. Now, this one surprised me. Gardevoir tanked a Leaf Blade, like really well, too, and we're almost 20 levels higher, but it Oh well, we make it to the other side. We go get Dragon Claw from Deer Falls. And then it's time for the Elite Four. So we've got Leaf Blade, Brick Break, Earthquake, and Dragon Claw. For Sydney, we're gonna strictly be going back and forth between Leaf Blade and Brick Break. As you can see, the Leaf Blade one shot at the Mighty Anna. It doesn't take out the Absol, but a Brick Break while at Swords Dance is perfect. We then Brick Break the Shift Tree. It takes it down to about a quarter. The second one takes it out. Cacturn comes out next. Again, we're brick breaking here. Only for the fact that these guys are part grass. So Leaf Blade, I just didn't think was going to do him much. This one took a bit here because Sydney decided this is where he wanted the full restore multiple times. But multiple brick breaks take it down. Two more for Crawdon, and it is all but over. Sydney, pretty easy. Time for Phoebe. Phoebe, we're going to Leaf Blade for the most part. This first Dusclops is so annoying though because it always gets the Protect off. Sometimes it gets the double Protect and it's even worse. We hit ourselves in Confusion, unfortunately. We're getting multiple Protects from this. I decided to start using other moves for we don't lose PP too much here because of uh, Dusclops' pressure ability. We finally take it out. We have 133 HP. We take the next Dusclops down to just a bit below half, but doesn't matter because the next one's going to take it out. We get the bayonet. It burns us. Oh, and we're out of Leaf Blade. Uh-oh. Not the smartest decision of mine. We get that one down with Dragon Claw, but I'm pretty sure this is all she wrote here due to the burn. So we go back into the next one. We Dragon Claw at the start, trying to conserve Leaf Blades. We get it down to a little bit below half. It's still protecting so many protects. We're it's just PP stalling us, which is so like it actually mind boggles me. The next one we try a leaf blade after we do one dragon claw, take it out. Now nah, please just don't burn us. It went for grudge. Okay, so we can just leaf blade it until it's done full restoring. We actually get the hit there, which was perfect. Must have low rolled those last two. And then we take out the Sableye in one. Awesome. Bayonet two. There we go, Phoebe is done. Glacia, 
this shouldn't be too bad pretty well all water types and we have brick break for the glalies so leaf blade takes both celios down in one shot the wall rain was the only one i was concerned about but we get a critical hit perfect timing i love it i don't know if it mattered but i'm gonna allow, let it slide this time we brick break the glalie get it to about a little less than a quarter it full restores another brick break another full restore we brick break it to the goes down and the same fate for the next glalie just brick break brick break brick break there wasn't too much strategy honestly with the skeptile especially being in the elite four we had lots of super effective moves versus our opponents so it was just a matter of just hitting them uh dragon claw here for their drake made it super easy i tried leaf blade here because i just wanted to see if it would take out the flygon being part ground it didn't but oh well we go right back to dragon claw and get the one shot we have 135 hp alteria is going to take a dragon claw takes it about to a quarter it dragon dances though so easy peasy there salamance gets the intimidate doesn't matter for us but we don't one shot it and it gets a flamethrower but it doesn't burn that's all that matters perfect kindra is next dragon claw Ooh, it doesn't take it out but it just goes for dragon dance so now it's just a matter of taking it out once we can boom see you later the elite four is done now i made a bonehead mistake here i forgot it auto goes right to the battle and i forgot to heal so we're at 52 hp we have overgrown effect though at least so we do one shot the whale lord and the milo tick perfect the tentacruel comes out i go for leaf blade and we get hit with ice beam i should have went for earthquake there to be honest i don't know why i didn't but it is what it is whale lord comes out as we try this fight again because i i don't see why we were gonna lose it we actually don't one shot the milotic though out of overgrow so it toxics us and that's gonna be pretty well all she wrote we'll we'll attempt it to see how far i can get we earthquake does one shot the tentacruel so that's good to know leaf blade oh we actually dragon clawed here my bad um but we leaf blade and we miss because of the double team and the poison just takes us to 18 health so on to the next one we're gonna do it again actually i think we did one more before this one too and it we got toxic again which is just unfortunate um because actually i do show it so we do show it the toxic hits us i don't ah oh, it's frustrating that was a frustrating one too honestly we try it again to see where we can get because i i think if we hit the ludicolo this was my mindset at the time if we hit the ludicolo enough we can maybe get past it but again we miss and we go down so we try it again. I get level 67. Leaf Blade takes out the Whale Lord. Perfect. My Lota comes out. We know it's not gonna one shot. Oh, we get a crit though, so we don't have to worry about Toxic. Perfect. We Earthquake the Tentacruel. It goes down. Ludicolo, a Leaf Blade should take it to half. It does. It double teams again, which is kind of annoying, but we do break through the double team and hit. Wish Cash, easy. One Leaf Blade, and then Gyarados what to do with the gyarados we leaf blade it takes it to half it dragon dances and there it is skeptile has defeated the elite four with a time of about 243 i'm actually shocked that i was able to do it sub three hours but hey i'll take it but we all know this isn't where this run ends we have one more challenge one scary scary challenge steven stone is left and we are gonna go try it here i tried it at multiple levels before i show here we tried it at 80 or we tried it at 77 which is what his level cap is usually that was not even close skarmory i hate that stupid steel bird i used to love you i hate you now takes us down multiple multiple times we get into it finally here i think we tried it again at 80 and then we tried it again here at 87 because i just noticed we weren't doing anything and the strategy that i was running with was we're gonna dragon claw the skarmory because it's the only the thing we can really do at this point um and then what i was noticing was four dragon claws would put it into healing range so we couldn't really get anything going that way so I started trying to slip in a brick break or a leaf blade in there. That way we could take it out. We'd have a little bit of health left. But we would 
not be able to one shot the Armaldo and it would just take us out. So I decided at level 90, let's try rest. Let's do a resto chesto strat. See if we can do make something like that work. And that just wasn't going to be the case. And here's why rest isn't going to work in this case. One, you're, we're using rest in the case where we get low health. We're also using it if we get toxic. And the problem with this is Skarmory does not just toxic once. He does it twice. Or if we get to the low health, he does he finally uses toxic after we've already done the rest strat. The other reason is if we actually do get by the Skarmory while using rest, we're just not set up in a good situation for when our Maldo comes out. Because it knows Aerial Elise too, and that's the move that's causing us the most grief right now. As you can see here, we're at 107, we're poisoned, we haven't done the rest strategy yet. I'm gonna pop rest here to do the Chesto Berry strat. Perfect, full health, okay, you're thinking great. 162, that's not horrible. We Dragon Claw, it releases, puts us to 50. I don't think we have enough juice in here to do it. You gotta rest again, and we don't wake up in time. Now, maybe we just try it at 50, but Metagross is just gonna take us out anyway, so that's why I, I thought we needed the rest there. So we go back at it, we're at level 92, we're seeing if we can make this work, and it's not. It's struggling, we're still losing, and that's really where it is. And I decide, finally, let's go get Absorb, because I can't get Giga Drain, because I'm the dumb dumb that forgot to realize we were maybe gonna need it, and I deleted it. But Absorb, base 20 power, let's see if it works. So, we try the fight again with Absorb. At level 95, we take a Dragon Claw, it does about a quarter. They Toxic, we've got the Petra Berry now, which is perfect. We take it down to literally 1 HP, it looks like. We're at full health though, so it's pretty well just a battle restart, so we just gotta hope for no Toxic. We get a huge Dragon Claw crit, which is perfect. We got the Steel Bird down, thank goodness. Armaldo comes out, we Leaf Blade. He takes us to 79 HP, a second leaf blade takes it out, Claydol comes out, and this is where Absorb comes in. Claydol cannot do a single thing to us, it's got Ancient Power and Earthquake as its attacking moves, which will do very minimal damage to us. We get it to a point where it full restores, where we can get even more health, which is perfect, that's what we want. And we get this fight done where we have about 159 HP, and that is perfect. Metagross knows Meteor Mash. Which is a scary move. Earthquake should be a two shot for us. We survive on 9 HP. Beautiful. Let's go. The Metagross is down. We're in Overgrow. Leaf Blade should one shot this Agron now. It does. Let's get it. The Cradilly is all that is left. And we get the critical hit. Let's go. I, I know it matters, but I do not care at this point. We beat Steven Stone at level 95. Let's go. If you made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time for the next challenge. Have a good one.